Malaysia. My fellow citizens and residents, thank you for tuning in to tonight's edition of Leadership Matters. This is our Federation's most popular interactive program engaging thousands of participants across various platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and radio stations and ZIZ TV. Our focus continues to be to secure the stronger and safer future for St. Kitts and Nevis in spite of the global pandemic. COVID-19 presents a real and present threat to world stability, growth, and development. Here in St. Kitts and Nevis, we continue to gain international recognition for our leadership and success in, manage, in managing the virus. Recently, the US-based Center for Disease Control, CDC, reclassified St. Kitts and Nevis from a level three risk destination to a very low risk destination as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Accordingly, the CDC says no travel health notice adverse to St. Kitts and Nevis is required. This is a significant recognition of our leadership in the management of COVID-19. I commend our conscientious citizens and residents for their responsible behavior so far. We have to be careful, however, that an overzealous few do not create a spike in the coronavirus disease by their inappropriate behavior. We have to be careful not to squander the gains made over the last six months by throwing caution to the wind by non-compliance with the non-pharmaceutical measures which up to this time are the only known way to reduce the spread of the coronavirus disease, avoid the overwhelming of the health system and ultimately deaths. Globally, there are 27 million 236, 916 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with 891,031 deaths recorded and 203,897 newly diagnosed cases were recorded within the last 24 hours. In St. Kitts and Nevis, we have no active cases and no deaths, and we praise God for this. With plans to open up the country in October, our citizens and residents must use the intervening period to perfect their compliance with health protocols, including practicing hand hygiene by frequent washing with soap, the wearing of masks, and practicing social and physical distancing. The unauthorized hosting of large parties and other events are in contravention of the laws and law enforcement will enforce the law against all who breach the regulations. By breaching the regulations, we risk a spike in infections associated with the coronavirus disease and we threaten the well-being of the vulnerable groups. Those who know better must do better. Lives are at stake. We have not come this far to go back into lockdown again. Monday this week, our schools reopened. Some 15,000 students across our islands of St. Kitts and Nevis have to be managed in a safe environment. This is a most significant development in our opening up of the society in advance of our borders being fully opened. Let us not add to our challenges at this crucial time. I ask for the understanding of all and responsible action by all our people. Those who know better must do better now. A word to the wise should be enough. 
I turn now to selected independence activities. And one of the highlights of our 37th anniversary celebration is the Prime Minister's lecture series. This year, 26-year-old businessman, Mr. Mark Pennyfeather, a mechanical engineer by training, has the privilege of delivering a lecture that hopefully motivates all of us to reaffirm our love for St. Kitts and Nevis, our commitment to build it and make St. Kitts and Nevis the Garden of Eden in this hemisphere. So many opportunities are available and we need all our sons and daughters to seize these opportunities. I invite all to tune in tomorrow night to the lecture series. This Sunday afternoon at Warner Park Cricket Stadium, we will have our Independence Church service, a truly national event. We have so much for which we must give God thanks. Let us attend the Independence worship, wearing our masks and observe social distancing as we enjoy the songs of praise, turn into thanksgiving and supplication to our omnipotent and omniscient God. We commemorate independence under the theme Resilience, Innovation and Security for Independence 2020. Mr. Pennyfeather is amongst a cadre of young persons whose discipline, entrepreneurial zeal, patriotism, ideas and philosophy of life are the stuff on which nations excel. That is why my administration has established a Ministry of Entertainment, Entrepreneurship, Talent Development with ICT as a subject within that ministry. This ministry will coordinate government's response to an enhanced role for young persons in nation building. As we build out our new Ministry of Entertainment et al., we will unveil of our national policy to provide the necessary facilitating environment in which ideas emerge, talent shines, mentors volunteer, and venture capital and other support are available to new young entrepreneurs. I commend our young people who dare to be different, to take a chance and dare to persevere. We only need a start and we only need a spark. I have been impressed by the passion of our young people to excel, particularly in non-traditional areas. Names like Sister Sensia, Desi Brown are young, talented artists. Our country has many talented people. We cannot afford to lose them as we continue to build our nation, making it the Garden of Eden. We want our young people everywhere to shine the light and in so doing elevate their lives and the lives of others here in St. Kitts and Nevis. My hope is that more of our young people will add something of value to our beautiful country by the effective way in which they utilize their talents in music and entertainment, visual arts, craft, photography, choreography, literary arts, science, technology, engineering and maths, fisheries and agriculture, etc. I wish to commend Jonathan Brown of J. Black Productions, a photographer whose photography tells a story through its imagery, its background and angle. Equally, I commend and acknowledge Amali Armani. It was my encounter with him that jolted me into imagining the new Ministry of Entertainment et al. I expect him and others to continue to give ideas as we fine-tune the further conceptualization and build-out of this new ministry. Open Interactive showed incredible talent in managing Teams Unity's virtual campaign, coordinating with other young talents like Alexis St. Joss and Azem Bailey. I want to thank and commend them all. 
the next five years of my administration, I dedicate to the young people of St. Kitts and Nevis, who are not asking what their country can do for them, but are doing incredible feats to and for their country. My government will facilitate, my government will help, but ultimately our young people must take the leap of faith in themselves, their ideas, their dreams, their country, and their God. Our efforts at nation building must and will be all inclusive and non-discriminatory. All hands are required to make my beloved St. Kitts and Nevis the best managed small island state in the world. Our collective efforts must build a prosperous, secure, and resilient St. Kitts and Nevis, where innovation, entrepreneurship, and superb performance are recognized, rewarded, and incentivized. Tonight, I am honored to have my cabinet colleague, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, the distinguished repeat representative for the beloved people of St. Christopher 8. Mr. Hamilton has portfolio responsibility for housing, national insurance, social security, social development, among other subjects. I welcome him to Leadership Matters. As far as an update on the stimulus package is concerned, I am pleased to report that during the course of this month, the Social Security Board will make a special payment to unemployed registered workers who are not in receipt of any state inflows, for example, severance payments. Minister Hamilton will perhaps engage the community further on this matter. Speaking about seven payments, the Labor Department has begun the processing of seven claims. We expect by next week some employees will be receiving their payments. I am advised by the Minister of Labor that some $11 million have been provided by the federal government to the severance fund to facilitate settlement of legitimate claims. Some 1,158 claims on the fund were received as at September 4, 2020. We ask for patience as the processing continues. All lawful claims will be settled but of course, all can't be settled at the same time. In closing, I thank the people of St. Kitts and Nevis for their love and support. I pledge always to do my very best for this country of St. Kitts and Nevis and its people, whom I love so very much. Thank you very much.